All right, that's our function. We want to find the vertex. Okay, you guys, get your two intercepts. Um, well, we're here, so let's first do the x-intercepts because then we can backtrack to the vertex, right? Okay, your two x-intercepts are here. It's your x1 and it's your x2 values, but remember, because of ZPP, your, what you see is actually the opposite, right? Okay, so what does that mean? How high? Okay, so this is number five. Eventually, I'll turn that to a one half, to a point five. All right, remember, this is x1, this is x sub 2, right? Okay, so what are my x-intercepts? What are the numbers? Negative 7 and negative 5. negative 5. You do the opposite because it's x minus x1. So if you see a positive, it's really x minus the value of negative 7, x minus the value of negative 5. So these two points then are negative 7, 0, negative 5, 0. Okay, so that's really quick. So factored form really, really favors x-intercepts. You get them really fast. And even the y-intercept is kind of fast. You guys are really good with the arithmetic. Okay. We have to find the vertex. So let's find it the easy way. All right. So the favored way for the vertex is many of you are realizing you take your number line. Here's negative 7. Here's negative 5. If this is where the parabola is crossing your x-axis, your vertex is always at the middle. Wherever the middle number is, that's your x value to the vertex, that's your axis of symmetry. And so, what is it? It's really easy. Uh, negative, six. negative six, right? So look, if we did it the long process way, I would ask you, count the distance between the two intercepts. If this is negative six, you would go, it's one, two units, right? Well, if we want the halfway, cut that in half. What's half of two? One unit. So your vertex, your axis of symmetry is one unit from your intercepts. It's one unit from the negative five to the left, or it's one unit to the right from negative seven. Either way, you land at negative six. So my vertex is at negative six, and then you gotta find your y value by taking the negative six and substituting, input, output. Keep going. Yeah. Okay, so you get the negative 6. I'm going to take this quadratic. I'm going to just make that a y, though. But if you want to make it an f of negative 6 for function notation, you can do that. I'm going to put 0.5, though, okay? So negative 6 plus 7, negative 6 plus 5. So that negative 6 gets placed wherever I have an x. And then you just order of operations. Okay, now you could throw it all into a calculator, but essentially you get one here, you get negative one here, that's negative one, so you're going to end up with a half. Okay, but let's see. Bless you. And so hit equal, and I get one half or point. Five. So I'll leave it there, but I'll also solve it by hand. Right, negative 6 plus 7 is positive 1. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. This ends up being 
negative one, and so there's my positive half. And so my vertex Yes. Oh, I didn't know you were doing it. Sorry. No, you're good. <clears throat> so, um, you're, you're definitely good at this one. All right, long way, because there are a few of you in here that you're choosing this method. If you don't want to do it this way, or the numbers just kind of confuse you, so this is a big or. Okay, so this is the long way. You can take this and expand it out to standard form. So take your factored form, get it to standard form, and then use your minus b over 2a to get your vertex. Okay, so I'm going to kind of push it up. All right, so negative 0.5 x plus 7. Now, if you're really good at distributing, this is actually really quick. It's not that much work. If you're really good at foiling, this is fast, right? Because look, do you guys remember the first term is x squared, the last term is the product, what's 7 times 5? 35. What's your middle term? 12x. 12x. It's the sum of the two. So that's 12x. So if you're good at this foiling or repetitive distribution, it's not too bad, but if you wanted to do the full expansion, x times x is x squared, x times 5 is 5x, 7 times x is 7x, I'm going to run out of room, 7 times 5 is 35, there's my 12x. Okay. So this trinomial comes from the distribution of these two uh, binomials, right? Times, times. Now you have to distribute here. So multiply, multiply, multiply. And so you get, and then what's half of 35? Mm, 17.5. Very good. All right, and so that is your standard form. And now if you wanted to do minus b over 2a to find your vertex, some of you are choosing that, then that is perfectly fine. But this is the, remember, we already found it up here. This is the longer way. Keep going. Yeah. Right. I know some of you are just kind of watching because you're, okay, negative, negative is positive, 2, and what's half of that? Negative 1, and there's your negative 6. At first I was going to, I thought I was going to get 3, and I was like, oh my god, I did something wrong, but duh, I saw it was a half. And there's your negative 6, which is what we have exactly up there. And so again, then, how do you get your y value? Take the negative 6, substitute it in standard form, or substitute it in factored form. It's up to you. You would get the half. Yeah. I'll draw an arrow to show you get the same answer. I'll do that. See, you get the same. So this was just an alternative way of finding it. It wasn't mandatory. Okay, we have our x-intercepts. That was really easy. You now just have to find your y-intercepts. How do you find your y-intercepts? You let x equal zero, you clean it up. Okay. move the paper or wait move it okay all right to find your y intercepts here right so here for the vertex you could use your number line to find midpoint 
right, using your two x-intercepts. Or you can go from factor form to standard form and do that minus b over 2a, which is up above, right? So this one is a big or, huge or. Faster, you know, more algebra. This just has more uh, chances for error if you accidentally make like a expansion then your answer kind of collapses. Here, if you can just find the middle number, it's super quick. Okay, your y-intercept, same as always, let x equals zero, and just solve it. Oh, and as usual, if a is positive, it's up. If a is negative, it's down. So this is the only one we need to go to. Solve for it? Yeah? Okay, so to find the y-intercept, right? Remember, this is it. I'm going to let x equals 0. So it's actually really quick. Okay, so I'm going to find the y-intercept. I'm going to let x equals 0. If this is my negative 0 0.5, 0 plus 7, 0 plus 5, right? So wherever I saw an x, I substituted a 0. And by the way, you guys should have, because we did the standard form, this is what we should get here, right? Remember that c value is our y-intercept? So, yeah, so we should get negative 17.5. Right, so negative a half, 0 plus 7 is just 7, 0 plus 5 is just 5. Take this big multiplication, negative a half times 35, like Ryan said, is negative 17.5. So that's your y-intercept, or this is the point. That's the value, that's the point. And now you can graph it. negative 7 and negative 5. So this parabola is going to cross the x-axis, obviously, because we have negative 7, negative 5. So if I come to the graph, negative 6, what's the vertex? Negative 6 and a half. it's coming down and then it'll finally hit it this is what your parabola looks like um, so they gave us all the information we have the vertex we have the two x-intercepts it's nice and pretty it's just kind of squashed hold on let me type 
Desmos, there's your graph. There's your negative 7, your negative 6 half vertex, there's your negative 5 x-intercept, and then way down low is your negative 17 and a half um, y-intercept. Okay. Yeah. But we won't do that much. Yeah, we just, just trying to get visuals with the algebra. Oh, your pablo looks good. Um, can I? I'm just gonna. 